All right, welcome. Hi. Hi uh, out there in Zoom land. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Elaine Bennett, and as you can see, the other person here is Marie in Contrera. Hi. <laughs> um, today we're here to talk to you about TEDx and um, how you can keep working toward your TEDx goals, even in quarantine, even though we're, you know, all home for the foreseeable future. And um, hopefully in the next 45 minutes or so, you'll, you'll get some value out of, uh, you know, seeing how you can uh, further your speaking goals uh, during this time. Right. And, and we are going to tell you about a program that we've put together, an insanely low priced program that we've put together. <laughs> I don't know what we were what we were thinking at the time, but COVID um, pricing. <laughs> yeah, um, but but in any case, this is not just about selling something to you. It's about giving something to you because that's the way we work. Uh, so we want to make sure that you leave here with some some value, some no, knowing a couple things or being reminded a couple of things that you you didn't you didn't think about before. And so whether that's how to present yourself when you want to try and get booked for a TEDx or whether it's how you how to how to create a story that nobody else can tell. We hope you'll get some value out of this time, too. Agreed. So, um, Elaine, why why TEDx? What, why is this important and why are we talking about this now? Well, you know, I've been a speechwriter for I more than 25 years mm -hmm. and speeches were they were on the way out to tell you the truth even mm -hmm. in the corporate world people were much more into you know video presentations or whatever and then Ted arrived and all of a sudden everybody wants to be Ted everybody wants to be Ted's best friend and the next best thing to being Ted's best friend is TEDx Mm -hmm. And TEDx are, well, you can explain a little bit better what TEDx is, but, um, but, it's, but it's an opportunity for anybody with a good message and a good way of expressing that message to be seen and heard beyond, why am I thinking of Superman far beyond the powers of mortal men? Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, that's how my brain works sometimes. I can't explain it. <laughs> um, but, but, you know, and, and it may seem like lots of people give TEDx talks, but that is not actually true. There are fewer people giving TEDx talks than, Marie? They go to Harvard every year. So more people go to Harvard than give a TEDx talk every year. And I know in, in our field, you know, and in our colleagues, it seems like everybody's giving a, a TEDx talk every day, you know, every month. Who, who's giving a talk this month, right? Right. And it's likely that if you're in the, on, you know, online entrepreneur space or the author space or, you know, thought leadership space, that you, you probably feel that way too, right? But the brand is not actually really getting watered down because you're more likely to go to an Ivy League college. And I know I didn't. You know, I, def I definitely didn't go to an Ivy League college, right? You're more likely to do that than you are to give a TEDx talk in your life. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, I mean, you get to a certain point in your professional development and it's sort of expected that you will give a TED talk. As a matter of fact, I met somebody at a professional conference last spring. Remember professional conferences? <laughs> and, <laughs> outside. <laughs> and, and, and one of the first things she said to me was not have you given a TED talk, but what was your TED talk about? Yeah. Hi, Elaine, nice to meet you. What was your TED talk about? <laughs> At that point, I hadn't given a TED talk yet. And she's like, why? I was like, I... Uh, <laughs> Pass the salt, please. I, uh, I have, I am now a TEDx speaker. It's in my bio. It's in my mm -hmm. email signature. Um, but, but um, yeah, but it is, it is an expected sort of rite of passage at some point yeah. in, your, in your professional career if you want to be taken seriously. It's a really good proof point. Um, mm -hmm. 
Yeah. yeah. And the social proof of it, I mean, you know, and I, I say this, I say this all the time and I say it respectfully, people are more likely to read, to watch your TED talk than read a book that you wrote. So, you know, it's, it's, um, it's one of those things that the brand recognition is so high when you stand next to a TEDx sign or stand on a stage or, you know, have, have a red, a red rug under you, you know, that is one of the most valuable things that you could do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So talk a little bit about what TEDx is versus TED, because that's mm -hmm. a, that's something people get hung up on a little bit. Yeah, sure. So TEDx is independently organized TED style events. So anybody can apply for the license to organize a TEDx talk, um, but they have to follow certain parameters. Uh, you know, the, the branding has to be a certain way, you know, they, they can only, um, you know, there are different levels of licenses in your first year, you can only apply for a certain level of license, et cetera, et cetera. And you have to uh, film the talks and, and they have to be in the TED style, right? Um, so TED, the, the um, mission of TED is ideas worth spreading and the talks are 18 minutes or less. And so when you give a TEDx talk, you could give that anywhere in the world. You know, there will be different places in, um, you know, different organizers have their events in different places, different venues, et cetera. But you will be giving an idea worth spreading talk in 18 minutes or less. Preferably less. Right. right. <laughs> less is more on the TED stage. Uh, on any stage, really. I mean, yeah. there's only so many, so much information that people can, can retain. So if you get up in front of your, you know, keynote audience and say, so today I'm going to talk about the 10 most important thing. Oh God, not 10, please not 10. <laughs> uh, talk about the three most important things and talk about them well and in detail yeah. rather than running through 10 points that you, because nobody's going to remember unless you've got an incredibly clever structure, you know, like they all rhyme or something. Um, and then you'll lose the other half of the audience because <laughs> they'll think they're in a Dr. Seuss book. But um, but yeah, keep it keep it simple. Every word that you speak should should move your idea forward. No no fluff, no filler. If you've got a five minute idea, don't try and stretch it into a fifteen minute idea. Right. Right. And there there are some really great talks that are five minutes. You know. Um, because, and you always, you always say this and I, and I love this. Don't give the audience a reason not to listen to you. Yep. Right. So, so don't start with a thing, you know, by thanking people, don't, don't, you know, do any of the sort of platitudes that yep. people do on stages, you know, just, just give, it's all about the idea. And that's one of the things that I really appreciate about Ted, because mm -hmm. when you look at any single Ted talk, yeah. everybody jumps right into the talk. There are none mm -hmm. of these preliminaries. And it's not like they're cutting out the preliminaries. They, they don't let you have preliminaries right, right into your, the meat of your argument. And, and so for any of you watching, you know, if you've been stuck in a ballroom or an auditorium listening to somebody thank people you've never heard of, mm. You know how, how it makes you feel and you know, you're checking your watch and you're maybe checking your email under the table. Don't, don't do that. Don't give people that. If you have people to thank, and I'm not saying you should be ungrateful, but um, <laughs> if you do have people to thank, thank them within the body of your speech. So find a way to, you know, I want to thank Marie because, you know, I'm sorry, my brain isn't, I can't, I can't ad lib today, <laughs> but, um, but I would find a, a way to thank Marie that added value to who Marie is and what her, what her role was in creating this uh, venue for me to speak at right. and how that advances the ideas that I've been talking about. Right, right. That's absolutely right. And, you know, and it, it's, it's the same thing when, when, um, you get into, you know, telling a story or whatever the case is, you know, it has to be that succinct because 10, 15, 18 minutes is not a long time, right? Or it is a long time. If you well, don't yeah. have much of an idea, <laughs> it's an eternity, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. And the best position to be in 
is to be in the position where you think, oh my God, how can I possibly tell this story in 18 minutes? And then you have to, then you have to compress your ideas and you have to take out the filler and, and, um, and that's when your speech gets really good. Mm -hmm. Because everything is something that I, as the audience member, need to listen to. I need to hear this. Right. Right, exactly. And, and I love the TED model for that because you don't start with, this is who I am and this is all my credentials and here's the book I wrote and here's my, you know, um, here's the award-winning business that I built or whatever, okay. you know, it, it's just a matter of here's my idea. And then in, in the process of that, yeah, you give the audience a little bit of you, right? You tell a great story or you, you know, there are details about your life that are really important, but you don't lead with that. Right, right, right. If you, I mean, you could get a lot of that in if you tell a story. Um, you know, my grandmother always said, wash the dishes before you go to bed. Mm -hmm. and, and when I was writing my book, I thought about that. I thought about don't leave things unfinished when you can finish them. I mean, I haven't written a book about that. That's just an ad lib. Yeah. And my grandmother never to told me anything about the dishes, but, but it's just, you can, you can embed the information you need to, to convey in a story and it's much more yummy. Yeah. Um, yeah. Agreed. Yeah. And I think, you know, you, you did a really good job of this because you started your talk right? You didn't, you didn't start, well, my name is Elaine Bennett and I'm an award-winning speechwriter. I've written for Warren Buffett and the Salmon Brothers and this, that, and the other thing. And, you know, people would have turned off, right? Yep. But you said when I was a baby speechwriter, I read this book and then you talked about your experience and yeah, like your, your credibility shined through, but you didn't, you know, bore us with five minutes worth of why we should be listening to you. Right, right, right. 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 I mean, think of uh, of a novel that you've read, and you open up the first chapter, and it's you know, here I am, uh, in in my kitchen that I built by hand, and I'm making my grandmother's recipe. I have no idea why my grandmother is in my head today, <laughs> but you know, and she died five years ago, and there's all this exposition before you get to who am I, why am I baking? What am, what am I doing? Mm -hmm. Versus you start, start the same book another way. And you're just like, you know, I, the, the, the batter was bubbling over in the, in the pan and I didn't know why it was rising so much because I was using my grandmother's, you know, and, and then you have something going on. Right. You have, you have the, the confusion and the chaos and, and something's happening that pulls you right in, hopefully. And um, if you've ever baked anything, maybe it will, uh, it pulls you in and, and you get all the backstory, but not, handed to you right right it's it's another way of like show don't tell yes you know? and it's the same thing in a speech but though even though it's a different medium even though you're yeah. telling something you you want to be you know you want to perform it almost as opposed to well i mean think about the times that you have listened to speeches and people have been telling you things mm -hmm. and how much of it do you retain and how how do, how much do you really care so you want to get your audience to care about you right first about your idea second and then you want to convey all of that information in a package that they will um that they will want to want to keep mm -hmm. and and store in their little heads and uh and have you with them forever I love that. Oh. <laughs> well, but, well, but you're right because a good speech, I mean, you know, we say Brene Brown, everybody knows what I'm talking about. Everybody knows who I'm talking about. Everybody knows the Ted talk I'm talking about. Right. Yep. You know, um, and that's something that will stay with everybody who's experienced that for, you know, that's just, yep. you know, so, so you do want to, you do want to do that. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's a word association at this point. You say Brene Brown, and I think vulnerability. Yeah. And, and that, you, it doesn't get better than that, really. Yeah. I mean, even mm -hmm. if you can't remember exactly what she said about vulnerability, you have enough information retained that you can look it up. Yeah, and, and also, you know, oh, you got to listen to that TED Talk. You know, that's, mm -hmm. 
that's what people say, right? Oh, have you heard Brene Brown's TED Talk? And right, right. You know, so like it, it, that's and that's the power of this, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you don't want if you don't want people to remember what you're saying, then why are you bothering to say it? Right. <laughs> <laughs> it takes whether you're giving a TED talk or a keynote speech or any other kind of uh, address. It takes time. Yeah, it takes a certain amount of time out of your life to prepare to to write the speech or or coach with the speech. And and in TED TED land, you have to memorize the speech. Um, and if you if if you're going to go through all of that, but you don't care whether they remember what you say. Right. You then might why, as well just go it. play golf or something. <laughs> there are better uses of your time. There are worse uses of your time. <laughs> you know? Right. Right. Exactly. And 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 a, TED, a TEDx, giving a TEDx talk or a TED talk is a lot of work. It's yeah. you know you you are going to want to memorize it. You're going to want to, you know, practicing a TED talk is a commitment. And you want to be able to make sure that you know it forwards, backwards, and upside down. And, you know, um, I, my, my marker for that is don't practice until you get it right. Practice until you can't get it wrong anymore. Because when you're on that stage, I mean, unless you're a professional actor, that stage is going to be a big, scary experience and you have to know your speech well enough, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Cause you know, somebody's gonna walk in in the middle of it or you're gonna look out in the audience and see a face you know. I, <laughs> I used to perform and one time I did a show and my, my high school English teacher came to opening night and I had written this thing and I was singing and, and, and doing, you know, comedy bits in between. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm like, oh my God. And she was there right there in the front row. <laughs> and I was like, oh my God, that's the woman who taught me how to write. Aww. And I, I was so far upstage that night, I was completely out of my light because I was just trying to get away from her. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, don't do that for your time. Don't, don't do that. Don't do that. You need to, yeah, you need to rehearse until, until, yeah. you know, your biggest celebrity crush could walk and sit in the front row and, and the only thing that they would think is, wow, she's really self-assured. Yeah. <laughs> wow, that's hot. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> And, and, and if you can, you know, if you can do it while you're standing on one leg or whatever the case is, you know, then when you get up on that stage, you'll be fine. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. and, you know, it may not be perfect, but you will, you will deliver what you're supposed to deliver. So, so basically what you've just heard from us is, is a 20 minute summary of a major program that Marie and I have, which, which walks you through getting your idea, honing your idea, finding the words to go with your idea and, and creating the speech and practicing it and getting you booked on a TEDx stage. That's our, that's our big program. That is not this insanely low priced program. <laughs> <laughs> what we've done for now is we've boiled down the essentials into a four-week program that will take you from, you know, Marie will start out the first week talking about your how to find an idea and and how to maybe find a TED then TEDx venue that works with your idea. And then I'll talk you through on the second week how to how to create a speech that only you can can give and I'll talk more about that in a, in a minute and then the third week we'll have a Q&A with the both of us so that you can ask us your questions because this whole time what you've been doing what we've been helping you to to accomplish is you're going to be creating your own five minute TEDx talk and it can be a complete TEDx talk in five minutes, which is a beautiful thing, or it could be the first five minutes of your talk or some five minute block of your talk, or, you know, if you've got a longer piece, but, but on the final week of the, of the program, or maybe the final two weeks, depending on how many more people we get signing up, uh, we will be doing 
your five minute TEDx talks for the group. Mm -hmm. And that will give you the opportunity to, if you've never spoken in public before, it's close as close as we're going to get to speaking in public right now. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> And if you, if, if this TED, TEDx talk I thought in your brain is just sort of like, oh, wouldn't it be nice someday to give a TEDx talk, then this is, this is a program for you to do that. And if you're, if you're a little more professionally focused than that, then this is a way to get started on the road that you're going to want to take further down. Uh, so that is what we're calling the TEDx happy hour. And the title should give you, give you a, an idea. And, and the, the uh, talking that we've done up until this point should also give you the idea that it's going to be fun. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we can promise that. We can promise it'll be fun. <laughs> um, yes. Our lawyer told us not to make guarantees, but we can guarantee some fun. Um, uh, so, so that's... Um, that's the TEDx happy hour uh, for the astoundingly low, low price of $197. <laughs> and I will tell you that I've never had this happen before. We've done a couple of different webinars to promote mm -hmm. this program. And, and one of the webinars we did, we had some co-hosts from another organization and they both signed up for the program. One of them yep. signed up for the program before we even did the webinar. Yep. And the second one <laughs> signed up while we were doing the webinar. I have never had a co-host jump into my program before. Yep. But um, that gives you a little idea of how people are thinking about the opportunity here and the value. But Marie, um, what should, I, what should I tell them about finding a story that's only yours? So, oh, I, I, I love that. So um, that's a really important part of your idea is finding a story that is all you, right? So your talk was about language. So even if I were to say, well, I want to give a talk about changing the paradigm and shifting our language, right? I cannot give your talk because I didn't read that book 30 years ago, right? Um, so that's kind of how the intellectual property um, aspect of this comes in. Because if it's a story that only you can tell, nobody can plagiarize your talk. They can reference it, sure. You know, they can give a different version of the idea. But if, if, if you have a story that or an experience or something like that that only you can talk about that's what makes a great ted talk yeah and i mean even if it's an experience like bungee jumping something i would never do uh <laughs> but but lots of people have done bungee jumping right and other people have jumped out of perfectly good planes um so people, people can reference that experience if they've had it, but nobody has had the same experience that you did when you were jumping off a cliff attached to a rubber band. Um, <laughs> never do that, but okay. Never, never. <laughs> never in never. my life. <laughs> um, and so, so you find what was, so you, you, you sort of peel away the layers of, you know, bungee jumping, experiencing fear, you know, right. like that, until you get to the very heart of it, which is your actual experience with it. And, and if you start with what is your experience and you're really honest about what that experience is, then Marie couldn't tell that talk. I couldn't, I couldn't give that talk. Nobody could give it. Right. So you have people when you were, when you were putting your TEDx event together, Marie, you had lots of people say, I want to talk about, you know, motivation or yeah. self care or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and to give a TED talk for, for the purpose of giving a TED talk is never a good idea. And so a lot of people say, Oh, it's on my bucket list. Okay. I want to do it oh, I know what I'll talk about. I'll talk about motivation or I'll talk about mindfulness or I'll talk about, you know, living your best life. Or I got, I, I kid you not, five entries with find your inner voice. 
and all of them went into right here. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, that's where my voice is. Um, (laughs) You know, but like those, those went straight into, into the no pile because they weren't unique ideas. Right. But, um, Actually, actually, that's that's kind of a lie because there was one person who their title was "Find Your Inner Voice," and it, the talk was not about that. Huh. It was actually quite astounding. Like it, you know, I, I the talk was so much stronger than that. And I actually approached her and I said, "Listen, you know, um, I want to accept you. We have to change your title," and she was fine with that, you know. And so she ended up giving a talk on her stage, you know. Um, but the, the is, that, point, is that the person who has ended up getting a hundred thousand views? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A hundred yeah, yeah, thousand yeah. views. That's a whole yeah. bunch of zeros. That's, <laughs> that's a lot. That's a lot. <laughs> that's, that's some life changing numbers right there. <laughs> and within like four months of the talk being yeah. published too. So it's not like it's been out there for two years and it's gotten a hundred thousand. Right. So the right, the, the right idea a really unique idea with a great title will exactly yeah exactly and and you know and and i i i i'm glad that we had that process because i think that made it even better yep. you know going through it and saying okay wait a minute there's something else here that we can we can uh talk about that will position this a little bit more uniquely so that's part of it but if you don't have an idea that that goes beyond motivation or mindfulness or finding your inner voice, what I suggest is go on the TEDx website, listen to other talks and see if you're saying something that, that hasn't already been said. And if you're not, that's fine. Come back when you have a, when you have a, a, an idea that's, or a take on it that hasn't been talked about. You know, um, Mel Robbins, her, the, the TED talk that made her famous, which was uh, stop screwing yourself over. That's a really, that's, that's a very, very common idea. But the way she talked about it was so unique that it, it now she's going to have a talk show, right? <laughs> you know, so, so it can be done. And it absolutely, you know, if you, if you really have an idea that is common, but it's being talked about in a way that other people aren't then then go for it but but do look for that unique angle right right um let's see what other questions have people asked us uh how do you how do you approach getting booked for a tedx what are the things to do (laughs) and the things not to do (laughs) my favorite topic uh (laughs) so um yeah, so tedx.com slash events. That's where you that's where you find events. That's where my team finds our events. Um, there are always events popping up and, and now a lot of them are being postponed or um, you know, look still looking for speakers when they weren't originally. So it's actually a really great time to be doing this. Um, it's it's an excellent time to be to be thinking about pitching. But um a lot of TEDx's have a theme, so you want to make sure that your TEDx talk fits the theme. Don't, if, if it doesn't and you can't find a way to fit your talk into that theme, don't submit anyway because it's, it's a waste of time. Um, you know, think of it as a college application or a job interview. That organizer is getting hundreds sometimes, you know, so... Yeah, that's, that's, that's my best advice is like, look for the events that fit you. And you want to make it easy for the organizer to say yes. Exactly. Exactly. Um, You know, and, and tell us how you did that because like, I, I'm so continually impressed by your application because it was brilliant. (laughs) (laughs) You can see why I like her. Um, (laughs) And you didn't even pay me to say that. (laughs) So Marie sent out the call for, for talk pitches and her theme for the TEDx women event was uh, changing the paradigm. Mm -hmm. Now that my first thought was, well, that's a narrow theme. Uh, 
I mean, you can do anything with it. It's, it's, exactly. it's, it's so broad. And so what, whatever I do, when I have an idea that's inconceivably broad, is I bring it back down to myself. And, or if I'm writing for someone else, to, to them. Uh, and so I thought, okay, what in my life, what time in my life have I ever had my paradigm change or my, my world shift? And I remembered reading this book when I was uh, a, a baby speechwriter um, mm -hmm. 30 years ago and having this really revelatory reaction to something that was just sort of thrown in casually into the book. And so I wrote about that. And, and basically it was about how we, uh, the assumptions that we make about women in leadership, i.e. that there are none. Uh, no, no women, not no assumptions. We make lots of assumptions. But uh, <laughs> so if we can, if we can see how the, the language we use and the language we accept from the past shapes our view that women are not fit to be leaders, we can see what we need to do to change that paradigm. And so that's, that's what I wrote the speech about. And, and you know, at first I was, I was a little hesitant because um, it, the book was 30 years old and you think of TED Talks as being, you know, forward thinking and, you know, this book that I'm writing that's gonna be out in two years. And I was talking about a 30-year-old idea, but it was a 30-year-old idea that really hadn't caught on. Right. And um, so it was, it was ripe for being brought, brought up uh, again. And the other thing about my, my pitch was because I was sticking so close to Marie's theme and because it was about language and, and changing the paradigm, I kind of knew the minute I submitted my 90 second video that if she chose me, she was going to have to put me first <laughs> in the lineup. And that is, that is what she did. That is what happened. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, and, and, you know, I, I love that because first of all, you know, for all the fine journal voices and, you know, eat better and live your best life and, and all that, there was nobody else coming even close to talking about language and the way you were talking about you know it's funny because you say if I may digress for a moment you know you say that's a 30 year old idea but actually no we're talking about that right now and so your idea was so so in the moment it was so like okay nobody else can talk about this nobody else is even submitting this idea so you know um and it's funny you say you say oh, that's a broad idea. And, and that's kind of the point of TED events, right? They, they do these really broad themes. So you're not going to have um, a theme be entrepreneurship or science or math. You're going to have it be something that's really, really broad. This way, any subject could fit underneath it. So for mm -hmm. changing the paradigm, we had somebody talk about language. We had somebody to talk about apologizing, uh, you know, um, um, AI and emotional intelligence. We had, you know, so, so there were all these different subjects that fell under the theme of changing the paradigm. Yep. So, um, and, and that's why these themes exist, right? Because they, uh, the organizers want to make sure that they have a diverse, uh, cohort of talks. Yeah. Yeah. But I just want to underline that, that thing about how to, how to get your arms around a really broad subject. And this is, this is probably the most important thing that I've said on this call. So I'm going to say it again, write it down. <laughs> if you have a really broad topic, bring it down to the human level. And that's not to say that you can't wax philosophical at some point in your speech, but you want to start yeah. as close to home as you can so that you can connect with your audience on a human level. Because once you do that, they're listening to you and they'll remember you. And you also get to say something more meaningful than just, you know, philosophizing about why do the stars rotate? And why does the moon, you know, <laughs> who cares? I mean, somebody cares. But uh, the other thing about that topic is that talking about language 
I have, I have standing to talk about language because words are my business and they have been my business for, you know, 30 years or so. So um, somebody else could talk about changing the paradigm in a, in a different way. It, right. You know, an architect or whatever. Um, I mean, why do, why do, Buildings built by a female architect look different than buildings built by a male architect. I don't know that they do, but that could be <laughs> something that you could explore. Yeah. Um, so you want to you want to set your idea within your area of expertise. Right. Right. And and you can stretch your area of expertise. This you can use this TED talk to establish yourself in a in a in a little bit wider sphere of influence than you already are in but you want to you want to you want to give yourself you want to be authentic i know people hate that word it's not a bad word um <laughs> you you want to speak from who you are mm -hmm. about what you do because i mean nobody wants to hear me talk about racial justice i mean right Right, right. No, it's true. And, and all of us to do that, but but yeah. <laughs> I can't stand on stage and say I am an expert on racial inequities because I have right. not had any. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. You know, and and um, this this is kind of a funny a funny aside, but I was taking a stand up comedy class, and somebody got up to to workshop something and was like, so my therapist. Ugh. blah 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 and and the teacher was like you don't have a therapist and he was like yeah you're right I don't she's like I knew just from the way you were saying that so anytime that you're inauthentic in any That's... way on stage people know unless you're a professional like you know unless you're a professional actor and what you do is pretend you're somebody else for a living there is no way that you can be inauthentic on, on a TEDx stage. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't have a podium to hide behind. Body language is really important, right? So you, you, you just need to, you need to speak from your experience. And if it's not your experience, say that, right? Like, it, you know, you didn't, you didn't say that um, you wrote this book on, on like, right, right. You know, I'm like, well, 30, 30 years, years ago, ago I, wrote this book. Writer, I wrote this book, <laughs> you know, published like you, by the University of Chicago Press. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You yeah. know, you, you, didn't, you didn't claim that as your idea. You were honest about it. And I think that that brought the, that made you even more credible because you had this, you had this example, you know. Um, so, you know, that's, and, and you'll be, you'll be talking about that. You'll be talking about how to craft craft a good story and, and everything. So I will. It's one of my favorite things to talk about. <laughs> so um, if you want to, um, if you want to join us, we start next week, next May uh, No, we 6th. start tomorrow. Oh God, that's tomorrow. <laughs> we start tomorrow. So <laughs> hurry, hurry up. Uh, <laughs> Time I'm, flies. See if I can get the uh, URL in a way that people can actually see it. Are you writing it down? Yes. I will put it in the chat for now, too. Bennettinc.com slash TEDx happy hour. Um, Yes, I spelled it right and everything. Um, so we're starting tomorrow or, or maybe next week, depending on <laughs> where my brain is. Marie will start tomorrow. I'll join I will you. start tomorrow. <laughs> so May 6th, that's tomorrow. And, um, you know, if you have any questions, you can, you know where to find us. But, um, you know, just come and join us. I mean geez, it's like, what, a week's worth of Starbucks that you're not even having anymore because you can't leave the house. <laughs> oh, I miss Starbucks. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Special COVID pricing. And we, you know, we probably, I think we'll do this again. It, it definitely won't be this price. It will definitely not you know, be this price. Um, this is probably, you know, 
10 or 20 percent of, of what the price will be so um yeah join us and and uh we're looking forward to having a good time together and also hearing some ideas we're spreading yes all right bye <laughs>